Hi, I'm Ron Polk. So I made a lot of progress on figuring out how I'm going to build the smart wood shop cabinets. I'm going to make them non-handed so the sides will be neither right nor left. It's going to make the actual uh, manufacturing of them go a lot smoother. And I might even argue that it will be faster than a CNC machine. I'll show you what I've come up with. So what I have for the smart cabinets is three different sizes of sides the tall, the standard, and the short. And now the sides will be non-handed, so a right side will work on the left. The only difference will be on the height. And the layout of the drawers is exactly the same. So all the bottoms start off the same, and I just march up, and I have set up the heights to be an exact dimension of the spacing of the drawer cutouts and then the extra it takes on the top to do the three quarter. So I don't have to really worry about a lot of the details. So I made up a jig. This jig I'm pretty excited about. It'll be the same jig to make all three sides. And again, they're left and right. So that means when I cut a left, I turn it around this way and it becomes a right. So no worrying about how many rights and how many lefts or setting them up in any way. So this jig, it references off of the bottom. So I've put a cross piece on the bottom that will butt up tight to the bottom. This here is the actual side. I've got four inches on either side. That's just to hold these um, guides here permanently in their placement. And this is going to be a very quick and easy jig to make. What I will do is all of these in the middle, all except for the bottom and the top, these will all be identical. And I have set them up that I will cut um, material. This will be cut out of 18 millimeter plywood. I will cut these to this particular width. And then I will set up the table saw. I'll flip these over. I'll set up the table saw to cut this 16th of an inch wide step to the depth that I want, which this I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch here. Now, this bottom isn't really necessary. I'm doing this more. Th this is how I do um, my adjustable dado jig so that I can use this as a reference to the exact point that the dado is cut. Um, because I am laying this out, one size fits all, I don't need a reference point. This bottom is actually going to reference off the bottom of all three sides and it's going to lay them out perfectly uh, the same. The, what'll happen is, is my um, router template guide will actually ride against this here. The bottom here will actually be where the blade would go. So if I could even make this a little bit longer and then the first cut, the first pass, it would be cut off perfectly. And I may do that. I may make these um, so that they're an eighth of an inch wider and make this um, notch here um, an eighth instead of a sixteenth. And then when I, when I pass the router on it the first time, uh, that'll cut off. That's just in a, a, a way that I'm going to make it. So I can rip a bunch of material to this width make the cut on the table saw, and these will be set up. The bottom one will just be exactly the same, except on the back side, I won't bother making the notch because that'll just be my flush up, and this will be attached to the side. So this will be a one-piece jig. And the top one, this one will also be just not, not cut out on the other side, and I'll flush it up. And you can see on the tall cabinet, it actually sticks up a little bit. It doesn't really matter. It, uh, I, could, I could have extended this one to cover that, but it's, it's a non-issue. And so what I will do is make every single cut that you see here to make the talls. When I go to do the, sh the, the standards or the middle size, this is actually not how it'll be cut. I flipped this over so that you could see what I'm doing here, and this is reversed. So I've got this upside down, but I wanted you to see the line up here. So when I do this, middle one, I will make, I'll, I'll, I'll write on this in, in big, you know, with a big marker, standard, 
and I know that I will make this last cut and I won't make the top cut because the top is the area that, that sticks up beyond where the three quarter spreader goes. And then the same thing happens with the short. So I will just make a um, mark on this guide and saying short. And I know that I will make this last cut and leave this one again, because the very top edge doesn't need a dado. That's where the three quarter spreader goes. So now I have set this up so that my sides are non-handed. The height doesn't matter. The same jig will work. I don't need to reference the jig other than off the bottom, which is all the same. So these will turn out absolutely perfect. Even if I didn't get one of these quite perfect in alignment, they're all going to be cut exactly the same. It's more important they're exactly the same so that on the rights and the lefts, they're the same. I'm going from the bottom. So even if I were off a little bit, or if I'm doing a jig that I have to reference, if I get a little bit off and then a little bit more off and a little bit more, if it doesn't take much to be off by the time you get to the top. And if that's not the same on every side, then you're going to have problems with the drawers. So this is a, a no brainer way. And once I'm, I'll take my time making this, although it will not take that long, I, you know, I'll rip these, I'll make the cuts. I will uh, rip this, um, four inch wide material and I will then start the assembly and I will screw them together and I'll take uh, care to make sure that I get them good and square. And then I will be able to just flop this down right on each of my drawer sides. And I can either, I can take a couple screws and just screw right into the sides to hold them or I can clamp any number of things. And I will argue that, you know, this is poor man's CNC. I have been working with the CNC machine a bit now, a, a nice big industrial machine that makes the pulp compact bench over at FastCap. And it is great for production. I think it's the only way to go, but that's for a lot of production. I'm only going to make a few of these. And once I make this jig up, I'm going to amortize that time. I can run my router quicker, make this pass, then I watch the CNC work. Now I'm sure there are much bigger machines with multi-head, but the machines that most people, especially smaller woodworkers are gonna own, um, the speed, once you have a jig made to run the router, you know, I'm gonna debate saving any time. I, I would bet you that if I had somebody set up their CNC with the code uh, for these sides, and then they loaded their play and then went and and then at the time they started setting their code up i started building this jig and then we went all the way through to cutting all of the sides i'm going to argue that i would have the sides cut before the cnc machine would have it cut now again cncs are the way to go but you know don't let that hold you back and think that this is too much work i'm going to do this in the shop and you're going to get to see this and i want to do it uh using methods that everybody has access to. Just, to, you know, if you're a carpenter, you need to have a router and a set of template guides are necessary, even if you have a CNC machine and they're inexpensive. And because I'm not using pattern bits, I'm not spending the money on expensive pattern bits and, you know, pattern bits work right up against um, your jigs. And so you have to be very careful letting a man this, I can just plunge right in. One of the other things that'll happen when I make my first cut, I'll set the depth up and the depth of the blade, I'll, you know, I'll be out of the cutter, the up cut spiral to clarify the bit I cut all of my datas with is an up cut spiral bit, solid carbide. They're not that expensive. They last a long time. They cut really well. The, you can also use a up down cut and you can even get a cleaner cut, but they're a little bit slower and I, I just haven't found them. I have them, but I don't use them that often. I use an up cut. And so when I set it up the first time, it will plunge through this side piece and cut out a notch in every one of these on both sides. And then in the future, if I want to use this jig, I'll just take my, my plunge router and I'll just plunge it down until the, the um, cutter hits where this will be cut out and that'll be a perfect uh, alignment every time. So again, you'll see this in the shop. 
I'm pretty excited about this. I'm glad I've taken the time to work out the bugs on this. Um, I've made plenty of these types of cabinets before and I haven't uh, taken the effort and energy to systematize things so that the uh, top section, bottom section are identical regardless of height. It's just a matter of adding more dados in the middle and um, also making them non-handed. Now, what that means is on the sides, if I show you what one of these looks like here, so it won't be confusing, the dados are through cut dados. So my stop, which will make it a right or the left, I have the option of putting in a small piece of wood that's a little block. I can glue it on, screw it on, um, pin it on, whatever I feel like doing. I can make it out of a material that, that will be, because I'm going to be bumping against it, I can make it out of a material of, say, hardwood, say, some maple. And I can just, if I do it, if I do the tapers, it would be more work, but I, I think I'm going to try both. Um, but I think just having the square block will be fine. Now, another thing I could do, I could use any other material as well. I could get um, some metal rod that's the exact width and height I need and cut it to the two inch length and then just drill a couple of pilot holes in the metal and screw them in. Um, I could do it with phenolic plastic. I mean, there's any number of things. I'll probably just do hardwood. Um, that's going to last um, as long as I need. And because they're um, attached separately, I can certainly replace them if there's any wear. And the drawers themselves, um, in case you didn't see before, they just have this notch out of the side. They're just a cutaway there. And it doesn't really matter um, if uh, I use a taper or I use a, a straight block. Either way, it's going to work just as well. So the goal here is that I've got this passive uh, drawer lock. I don't have keys or, or any kind of hardware. You know, it's, it's less expensive and I want it to be so that when I close the drawer, it drops in and it will not come open on the ride. Now, as you know, if you follow my other videos, my last trailer, I used the screw method, but I never installed the screws because I had done some testing in my truck that had the screws. I'd removed some and I never once had a drawer come out even an inch. And, you know, our roads aren't bad, but I bounce down dirt roads and go up driveways and things as well. And, you know, you would have to have some pretty good swing to get these things to open. So this is going to be cost effective. It's going to be efficient in the day to day use and it's going to do the job. You know, this particular type of stop I haven't used before, but I did the screw and that worked. And this is just in theory going to be superior to that and easier to manufacture. And I don't need to buy those little screws with the big heads, which aren't super expensive. But, you know, it'll save you $20 uh, on this trailer of buying those screws. And all of the parts and pieces, since I've got everything uniformed, I'll be able to make a little jig. And, and because all the drawer bases, it doesn't matter what the height of the drawer is, the drawer bases are all identical. So, again, I can make all the drawer bases and, you know, just cut them uh, with my track saw. So I'll get my widths cut and then I'll, cut, I'll cross cut them all. And that'll all be track saw work and that'll go really quickly and then I can set up a jig and route out this it'll it'll cut this corner a little rounded but that'll be fine I could chisel it out but I won't need to do that why waste the time and so I'm pretty happy with how everything is working out I'll have a jig already have it made to make these handles it reference off the top edge so it doesn't matter um, what uh, height the drawer is so everything has been made universal and when we get down to the shop and you get to see uh, how I put this together, I think you're going to be impressed and be uh, excited to be able, if you're interested in building yourself some cabinets for your shop or for your truck or for your trailer, I think this is going to be really scalable and uh, be something that is repeatable. Well, that's the update on the Smart Wood Shop. I am still waiting on my tracking notice from Moreland. They are shipping the material. I am going to be talking to them on Tuesday. I hope to have the tracking number by then. We're also going to be talking about availability of this material to you and a, a 
hopefully a campaign that you guys can join in and get your local lumber yard, uh, your Home Depot, your Lowe's to start inventorying this stuff. I, I showed you these samples. I'm waiting to get the, the uh, full stuff, but I'm pretty excited about working with it. The weight, the beauty of it, and also from talking to the technicians there at Moreland, they said that it's machining the way it works with blades is phenomenal. Uh, it's, it's easier on your blades and it cuts really nice. So I'm excited about that. I'll talk more about that after I talk with Moreland on Tuesday. Thanks for taking, oh, and if you want a set of any of my plans, there'll be a link in the description of the video down below. I'll also put some other links to my trailer and to Moreland so you can see the materials and any other links I can think of. So remember to click that show more button and there'll be that info down below. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.